Welcome to analyze the relationship between two quantitative variables, focusing on the least squares regression line. In this video, we're going to talk about interpreting the slope and y-intercept, a really, really important task when talking about a least squares regression line. So here we have an example where we looked at the explanatory variable of the miles on 16 trucks and the response variable of the price of those trucks. And we clearly see a beautiful, linear, negative, fairly strong relationship. As the miles on a truck goes up, the price of that truck goes down. That's just common sense if you know anything about used truck prices. And of course, we fit a linear model. The best linear model that goes through this data that produces the sum of the squared residuals to be as small as possible. And that line is the predicted price, y hat, is 38,257 minus 0 0.1629 times x, which is the number of miles driven on the truck. All right, great. What do these numbers mean? Now, there's going to be another video that talks about where I even got these numbers from. But right now, I just want to focus on what do these numbers mean? Like, what is the 38,257? Like, where'd that come from? What does it represent? 0.1629? What the heck is that? Well, first off, we just have to be able to, first and foremost, know which one's the slope and which one's the y-intercept. So that's, that's sometimes half the battle. So we do go in alphabetical order, A plus BX. So right away, A, the y-intercept, is the 38,257, and B is negative 0.1629. Okay, great. I know the y-intercept, I know the slope, but again, what do they mean? What do they represent? Well, before we come back to this problem to tell you what these numbers represent, let's look at it from an algebraic point of view for a second. Go back to algebra class for a second. What does the slope and the y-intercept in algebra mean? Well, slope, you probably heard, is rise over 1. It is how much the y variable changes for each increase of 1 in the x variable. So if we have a slope of 5, we say, okay, the y variable goes up 5 every time the x variable goes up 1. If we have a slope of negative 3, we say the y variable goes down 3 every time the x variable goes up 1. Okay, makes sense from algebraic point of view. What about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis, and this is basically what happens when x is 0. So if the y-intercept is 10, we say, all right, if x is 0, y is 10. If the y-intercept is negative 7, hey, uh, y is negative 7 when x is 0. So again, y-intercept, pretty simple. What happens to y when x equals 0? So first, we have to have a strong understanding of what these numbers represent in an algebraic point of view. Then we could apply that same understanding in context to an actual problem where there's a lot of words and meaning to it. So let's, again, let's, let's just focus a little bit more on slope. I really want us to hammer what slope represents. So first off, slope is, again, that B value. So the slope tells us Again, now, now we're getting a little bit more statistics here, right? Algebra, it's how much the y changes every time the x changes by 1. Okay, but now let's put the statistics in that. The y variable is the response variable. The x variable is the explanatory variable. So the slope tells us how much the response variable y is predicted to change for each increase of 1 in the explanatory variable. Now, why did I add that word predicted in there? Oh, boy, because remember, the y hat represents the fact that no one is promising that any of this is going to come true. It's just a prediction. All right, so let's look at four different B values and see if we can make sense of them in a little bit more of a statistics point of view. So first off, I think it's super important. It really does help me personally to always make it a fraction. You could turn any number, positive, negative, decimal or not, into a fraction by putting it over 1. And then I always label the top as y and the bottom as x. That way I remember x is always the bottom, which is the 1, and the number on top is always the y. Okay, so here it goes. This slope tells me that the response variable will increase by three units, predicted, for each increase of one in the explanatory variable. Now, you could actually switch that sentence around if you want. You could put it, you know, just kind of take the back and put it in the front. As the x variable increases by one, we predict the y variable to increase by three. You could do it either way. Let's try this next one out, make it a fraction, put a one on the bottom. X is the one, y is the 1.5, here I go. 
This slope tells me that the response variable y is predicted to change by 1.5 units for each increase of 1 in the exponentiary variable. Easy. All right, let's try this next one. 1 is the x, negative 7 is the y. I'm going to switch this one around. Every time the x goes up 1 unit, the y is predicted to go down 7 units. That's what the negative means. All right, let's do this one as well. Put a 1 down there on the bottom, x, y. Here I go. As the x variable goes up 1, comma, I predict the y variable to decrease by 0.45. Decrease is negative, right? So again, you could say it a couple different ways. You could switch the ordering up, but you got to make sure that when you're talking about that y, it's a prediction. So I could again say, hey, uh, I predict the y variable to go down 0.45 units, comma, every time the x goes up one unit. So again, just trying to use those words in there, make sure we're using that word predicted and using the response and the explanatory. The other thing I said a lot was units. I kept just kept saying units. Obviously, in an actual problem, you're going to put the units of the problem. And we're going to practice that in a moment here. All right, let's do the same thing, but this time with the y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept is the a value. So the y-intercept is what we predict the response variable y to be when the explanatory variable is zero. Okay, so if I have a y-intercept of 450, I would say something like this. Hey, I predict the response variable to be 450 units when the explanatory variable is zero units. Or, again, I could flip that sentence around. When the explanatory variable is zero, zero units, I predict the y to be 450 units. Very, very simple. Here's another one. Hey, uh, you know, I predict the y variable to be 66 when the explanatory variable is zero. Here's another one. Uh, when the explanatory variable is zero, I predict the y variable to be negative 75. Easy. I mean, how simple is this? One more. Uh, when the explanatory variable is zero units, I predict the y variable to be 0.256 units. Say it however you want, but the a value is the y, and it's telling me what I predict that y to be when x is zero. Now we just got to throw some context in there. So let's go back to our truck problem. All right, back to our truck problem. The slope was negative 0.1629. So I like to take that negative 0.1629, put it over 1. 1 is the x. The 0.1629 is the y. So generically speaking, when the x variable goes up 1, I predict the y variable to go down 0.1629. But now I'm going to sprinkle in even more context. When the mileage on a truck, that's the x, goes up by one mile, there's my unit, I predict the price of that truck to go down by 0.16 dollars, which is 16 cents. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? How simple is that? And again, I could also flip the wording around. I predict the price of a Ford F-150 truck to go down by 0.16, 16 cents, for each additional one mile that is added onto the truck. You add whatever bling you want to it, but you got to make sure you have units, you got to make sure you have that word predicted, and you got to make sure it's in context. Pretty simple, I hope. All right, next up is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the 38,257. Generically, this is what we predict y to be when x equals 0. So when the mileage on a truck is 0 miles, I predict the price to be $38,257. The predicted price of a truck with zero miles on it is $38,257. Say it however you want, but the y-intercept is the y variable that we predict. So make sure you put dollars on that $38,257. And it's what we predict the price of a truck to be with zero miles on it. Hopefully I'm making sense here. All I'm trying to do is um, unexplain what these numbers represent. Now I do want to make a couple quick comments about the y-intercept. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. Here, we could argue that this makes complete sense. A brand new truck could have zero miles on it. Go to, go to a new car lot. Definitely new cars are going to have zero miles on it. And a brand new truck costs money. Costs a lot of money. So a brand new truck costing $38,257 makes sense. But another reason why you could actually argue that this doesn't make sense is if you go back and look at my data, my data ranged from roughly 20,000 miles to maybe 130,000 miles. So trying to make a prediction for zero miles on a truck, well, that, my friends, would be called extrapolation. 
Now, I'm not trying to say that this number is wrong. It is the correct y-intercept. It's the, it's the value that the function needs to work. But trying to actually say that that's a true statement might be a little bit of an extrapolation and might not be accurate. But again, it doesn't mean my interpretation is wrong. It doesn't mean the number 38,257 is wrong. It just means that its, it's interpretation might be extrapolation. All right, let's do one more example. Let's go back to ice cream and temperature. So this was a scatter plot that showed as the temperature goes up in a town, the ice cream sales also go up. Very linear, very strong, very positive. All right, so let's just say that the line of best fit, the least squares regression line, was negative 100.22 plus 27.51x. Let's interpret that slope. Okay, first thing I like to do, take the slope, Put it over top of 1. 1 is the x. The slope number is the y. So when the temperature, that's x, goes up by 1 degree Celsius, got to have units, I predict the sales of ice cream to go up by $27.51. Oh my gosh, again, you could word that two different ways. As the temperature goes up by one degree Celsius, it is predicted that the ice cream sales will increase by $27.51. Units, context, please make it happen. And again, you can flip that around. The ice cream sales are predicted to increase by $27.51, comma, for each increase of one degree Celsius in temperature. Makes sense. Got to have that rich context. And then what about that y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is what happens when x is zero. So for a day when the temperature is zero degrees, x is the explanatory variable. The explanatory variable is temperature. So when x is zero degrees Celsius, we predict sales of ice cream to be negative $122. Negative $100.22. What? Okay, well, let's stop right there. That is the correct interpretation. The y-intercept is what happens to y when x equals zero. So when there's zero degrees outside, we would predict the ice cream sales to be negative $100.22. But this is a great example where it doesn't make a lot of sense in context. Well, why? Well, maybe it's extrapolation. Look at my data. It ranged from 12 to 26 degrees. Zero would be silly of me to try to extrapolate. But it also makes sense a little bit because you could say, well, listen, if it's cold outside, um, you're actually losing money because you're paying your employees, uh, you're running the heat, you're running the ice cream machines, but when it's that cold outside, more than likely nobody's going to come to buy ice cream, so you're probably going to be losing money. Okay, regardless, all I care about right now is that you understand how to interpret it, which I think is pretty easy if you've been paying attention. All right, that's it for this video. Interpreting slope and y-intercept is a huge task that you are going to be asked, I promise, so be prepared.